Hello, North Central Washington. I'm your host, Jenny Rojanasatian, and I want to welcome you to Networked. Our show is a bit of a variety experience led by the nonprofit I have the pleasure of working for, NCW Tech Alliance. Each week, we feature individuals and organizations from around the region who share their insights and experiences ranging from technology to entrepreneurship to education and everything in between. On today's episode of Network, I'm sitting down with longtime entrepreneur, investor, and friend to NCW Tech Alliance, Tim Jenkins. Tim is the president of Colcheck Companies, whose mission is to help people make purposeful, private investments that improve lives. The team at Colcheck tell us that they are focused on seeking profitable outcomes, but that they measure success beyond the monetary gains. Kolchak is based in Leavenworth, Washington. In just a few minutes, I'll invite Tim on air to share more about his background, his company, and some of the exciting plans at this year's Flywheel Investment Conference on May 18th and 19th in Wenatchee, of which Tim is helping support. I'll see you after this brief commercial break. Welcome to Networked. We are on air with our guest today, Tim Jenkins from Colchuck Companies. Tim, welcome to the show. Great to be here. Um, we have had that opportunity to know each other, gosh, about four or five years now through yeah. the Flywheel Investment Conference, um, but I've never had you on the TV show, so very excited to introduce our viewers today to you and your company and um, all the great work you do. But let's let's start at the foundation. Okay. Um, live up in Leavenworth. Mm -hmm. Okay, tell me a little bit about your background. Well, uh, well, I do live up in Leavenworth. Uh, yeah. I have a wife and three kids, yeah. and um, but I work out of Leavenworth now. Didn't wasn't always the case. Yeah. Started my career in Seattle. Yeah. Uh, I was a management consultant for a number of years with what's now Accenture, yeah. and I started uh, helping to put roll out computers onto desktops back when nobody had computers <laughs> on desktops. So that was kind of a challenge yeah. rolling out email internet. Um, and that be, uh, led us to um, start a consulting firm called Point B, which about 27 years ago, which became a fairly large national firm. And uh, so I was the CEO of that company for a number of years and then uh, sat on the board until just recently when we sold, uh, well, we sold the company to our employees about um, eight years ago. And uh, more recently, uh, a private equity firm took a majority interest in the company. So now the private equity firm and the employees own it together. And at that point, I said, you know what? I'm out of the consulting world. So I stepped away from <laughs> yeah. the board uh, just, just in the last couple of months. Yeah. And so that was my early career. So I really had, I really had three careers. I started as a management consultant in information technology. I spent a lot of years running a consulting firm. But eight years ago, when we did the um, the sale to our employees, that gave me the opportunity to really look at doing something different. And that is when uh, I, I thought, you know, I've ha I had some liquidity, had some had some wealth, and I thought you know, there's a reason why I've been entrusted with this, and I need to be a good steward of it. So we formed Colchuk, which is essentially an invest private investment company mm -hmm. to invest that wealth. Yeah, that's. So I'll kind of leave it at that. So yeah. that's, that's that's the background. <laughs> that's the yeah. background. Yeah. Um, I. I imagine that having worked for over 27 years, as you said, um, mm -hmm. or in consulting, you really had an inside look into how companies work, the successful mm -hmm. ones, the ones that are struggling. Tell me a little bit about how that background of experience maybe prepared you to then evaluate and look at companies for investment. Yeah, it, it prepared me in a way. Uh, obviously, being a consultant, I always say it's like dog years. I mean, you see a lot of <laughs> you see a lot of companies yeah. in a short period of time. You see yeah. a lot of things. Uh, I used to laugh when I come into a company and they talk about their issues, and I'd say, "Well, I bet this is happening. I bet that's happening." I'm like, "How did you know?" I'm like, "Well, <laughs> a lot of these companies operate pretty similar, yeah. and and human nature is human nature, to, right. regardless of what company you're working with." Um, so that was good, but a lot of the companies I saw were big corporate organizations. Mm -hmm. And moving into the investing world, there, it was different. I mean, okay. A lot of times we're investing in much smaller companies, uh, startups. Uh, some of the investments we do are in real estate, so that's completely different. I had to learn a whole new uh, area. And even the networks of people, like the people that I knew in my consulting days in the corporate world were one, set, one network. When I got in the investing world, it was, it was a really different group of people that I got to meet. And frankly, it's been great. I love variety. I love um, 
learning new things. And so being able to kind of plug into a whole new network and learn a whole new thing. And uh, after being quote unquote, an expert in one field to go into a new field and be a complete <laughs> neophyte was was kind of fun, actually, to see how fast I can get up to speed. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a new part of the journey mm -hmm. um, after a very successful career in consulting. So let's dive into Kolchak. Uh, you, you alluded just a second ago, there's some real estate um, investing, small companies. Um, at its heart, you know, what are you really passionate about um, as you said, stewarding yeah. with those investments. Yeah, so Kolchuk's uh, purpose is to, de to, to deploy capital in the service of people. Mm -hmm. So our goal is really to deploy capital in a way that improves human lives and uh, human flourishing is another term I've heard re more recently. So um, that's really what we're trying to do. We're not just trying to make more money for the just for the sake of making more money. Mm -hmm. uh, our purpose is to really improve lives and improve the world around us. So. Uh, we invest in a lot of different things. Uh, we invest. We started investing in real estate uh, to start out with. Um, that's branched into a number of different areas, which we can go into more in a minute. Um, we uh, we then moved into private equity, which is investing in comp essentially in established companies, and typically in our case, they're small to medium sized companies. And then more recently, we've been investing in venture capital, which is the startup world, right? And that's where uh, that's Flywheel, and we're going to talk a lot about Flywheel in a second, mm -hmm. but. Uh, that's a whole other uh, universe. Um, let's talk a little bit about for people who may not know. Can you can you tell me uh, the differences in type of investments? Just uh, just kind of mm -hmm. high level. Uh, so we talked about venture versus private equity. If someone's watching today and they say all these terms are going over right, my head, right. yeah. Um, break down to me um, a little bit more about those investment cycles. Well, I think I'll, I'll start with real estate because. Yeah. Love Times when people think of real estate, they think of homes, and that's obviously a part mm -hmm. of real estate. But there's also multifamily, which is apartment buildings and things like that. There's manufactured home communities. Uh, there's commercial real estate. There's uh, there's um, industrial space. So there's a lot of different types of real estate. There's even mm -hmm. raw land, of course, and timberland. And so those are all different classes of real estate. Well, similarly, when you get into the, the world of stocks, you have a lot of different kinds of stock and that you, most people think of the stock market, they think of Wall Street and publicly traded stocks. They just think of those top 500 companies. Exactly, Microsoft and, and yes. Google. But there are a lot of other types of uh, stock companies and, and many, frankly, the vast majority of them are these private companies that, that still have stock. And so a company that says, let, let's just uh, well, use a, a specific company, right. but say a company that has 50 million in revenue, mm -hmm. they're privately held maybe by their founders still, uh, they're still going to have stock. And oftentimes those people will want to sell some of their equity in their company in order to raise money uh, for new investments or just to take some money off the table for them personally. And so that would be a private equity investment. Mm -hmm. And so you can make a minority investment in that company, or you can make a majority investment, or you can buy all the stock in the company and take it over. And so that's that's the term private equity that you often hear. Uh, venture is similar in that you often are buying stock. There's there's some variations on that, but these are typically companies that are that are new, just mm -hmm. starting out, and they're probably going to likely need more investment, uh, quite a bit more investment as they go forward and grow. So that so there's some similarities between venture capital and private equity, but typically the, the difference is just the stage of the company, and then also the risk factor. I, at, true, first true. of all, you did a really great job of illustrating. Yeah. Um, those different investment options. So thank you for that right, right. very high level yeah. overview. Uh, I'm gonna have to steal those in the future. Yeah. But there's also the risk factor, right. right? And so I think when people think of real estate, they think of um, generally maybe a lower risk because it's a very established, uh, tangible asset. Absolutely. Um, versus our early stage startup who, yeah, a lot of them fail. Right. 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 So it's also, I imagine, for yourself and other people in this space, it's a, part of this is about risk tolerance, right? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. And, and typically what you'd like to see is that the potential returns go up with the risk that you take. Yeah. Right? <laughs> but, uh, you know, in real estate, yeah. you you rarely see any kind of real estate that's going to go to zero. If you, mm -hmm. if you buy a piece of real estate for $100,000, it's unlikely the price is going to be zero, right? Unless it falls into the ocean or something. Right. But... Uh, in, in, even in private equity, when you're buying into an established company, it's usually pretty unlikely that company is going to go bankrupt, although it does happen. Um, but the risk is lower, and so therefore the returns you're looking for in private equity are going to be a bit lower. Um, and the, but when you get in the world of venture, 
probably the majority or the probably at least half of the companies that you invest in are going to have a negative exit. Either they're going to go to zero or you're going to get back less than what you put in. Right? So you think, well, why would anyone do that? Well, the reason that some people do this is that some of the companies you put funds into are going to, that company's going to grow and your investment's going to grow. And hopefully what happens is if you have a portfolio of these companies, some of them make a lot of money and they more than pay you back for all the, the ones that went under and you lost money on. But that's why in an angel investing, it's important to, to invest in a portfolio, not just in a single company. So. And um, I kind of smile because you're right. There's a lot of them that won't be successful, but you're really uh, trying to anchor your portfolio with a lot of companies so that when you do see success, it balances that right. out. And I, I, I'm not going to quote the stats, but I think it's I've heard something that's like tw you need at least 25 to 30 companies in early stage investing before you're really going to start to see the return. You invest in one, very high risk. Right. Yeah. And that, and that's that's part of the reason yeah. why it took us a while to get into venture. I, I did mm -hmm. a venture investment in my consulting days and frankly it was a it was I picked the right investment. It was a mm -hmm. company that's now um, you may have heard of it's called Zipcar. And I invested mm -hmm. in a predecessor company in mm -hmm. Seattle and uh, got in early and I did not put any further money in. I was never allowed to. That's something I learned that you need to do. Um, the company had a, a down round, meaning that they had it was kind of desperate, and so mm -hmm. it took on some bigger investors, including Steve Case from AOL fame and Lee Iacocca, the mm -hmm. former Chrysler chairman. They yeah. came in. You think, hey, I'd be doing great. I'm now right. investing yeah. alongside some yes. big wigs. Uh, Honda had invested, but uh, what happened was in that down round, the, these bigger investors came in and bought the stock much at a huge discount to what I paid for it, and. So I didn't sell out. That was the only smart move I made. I didn't sell at that point. But unfortunately, I didn't wasn't able to buy more. Well, the company went on to be purchased by Zipcar. Zipcar went public through an IPO, and Zipcar was um, ultimately purchased by Avis. And so you think, wow, I must right. have like made this, a lot of money. That's the story. Yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> exactly. And I will tell you that I, um, from the time that I decided to keep my tiny investment, yeah. I did make a lot of money. Unfortunately, that ended up being about. Seven, or I lost about 70% of the original money I put in, despite right. all those good things happening, mm -hmm. right? And that was just pure naivete, mm -hmm. right? And so uh, I started, I, as a consultant, I was just curious, like, how could you ever make money in this? How would anyone do right. this? And so I did, I, I do invest with some much larger venture capital firms, and they, there's one event where they had some very sophisticated angels come in and speak. And one of the things I learned quickly from them was, you have to really be able to do this not just not necessarily full time, but pretty close to full time, and you have to be willing to um, to invest in a portfolio. And you're exactly mm -hmm. right, Jenny. Twenty five or thirty is probably a minimum amount. Uh, some of these sophisticated angels have fifty or sixty companies in their portfolio, and probably twenty or thirty of them are going to go under. Right. So. Well, yeah. I love that. I yeah. I do. Um, I mean, bummer for you, the 70% yeah, right, of your investment. Right. So I don't mean to make light, but it's um, what a learning experience to see a company you invested in go through the full success story. Mm -hmm. um, but it wasn't exactly that same success for all the investors along the way because right. of the way investments shift right. and the way the company performs. Right. So I think there's a, there's a lot of lessons in there, I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, I know you've been very generous in sharing with our community. Um, we do have to go to a break uh, for just a minute, but we'll be back here at the NCW Life Studio in just a minute. Well, welcome back. Uh, we have been talking with Tim Jenkins, uh, president of Colchuk Companies, um, about investing, your experiences, um, and then we also want to talk about the Flywheel Conference. But before we get there, I'd love to hear a little bit more about Colchuk's, you know, what are you looking for when you make investments? Kind of what are your what are your foundational principles and maybe a few of the investments you've made locally? Sure. Yeah. So we uh, we invest in four different ways. And a lot of times people think, well, you know, there's only one way you put money in and, and that's it. Uh, but we have we, we think of things in four buckets. One is time and knowledge. There's, there's a, a lot of folks that just ask us for advice, and that's fine. We love doing that. Uh, we want to help. We want to help people grow businesses as well as grow great lives. So, we we invest a lot in just people. Uh, we invest our time and our knowledge in people. Um, another thing that we do is chari charitable investments. Mm -hmm. And you think, well, that's not really an investment. That's giving money away. 
Well, we look at it a little differently in that, that we like to invest in the nonprofits that we, um, we give to, and we like to see impact for that. So there is, there is a, a vetting process of, you know, are, is there real impact? And so lo- locally, Upper Valley Mend is a great example. Uh, we invest in Mend, and particularly we love the gleaning program that they've got that serves the entire uh, central Washington area. So that's wonderful. The, th- the third area is something that we're really expanding right now. It's called impact investing. And that's an area where we are making for- investments in for-profit ventures, but we may have a lower threshold for uh, profitability that we would look for otherwise. And the idea with impact investing is to make is to really deploy our funds using our great sort of market-based system to have impact at scale, to really to impact lives at scale. And then, so that's an area that we're really shifting into even more. And then of course, the, the fourth area is the traditional area. And, and uh, one term we use is tent making, which is a reference out of the Bible. Uh, but basically th- those are the investments that we, you know, the goal is to make money. And obviously, they still have to, they still have to be investments that benefit people's lives or at least be neutral. But those, we have a pretty um, high bar in terms of profitability. So those are the four areas that we invest in. I love that you have um, such a really well-rounded thought process. Mm-hmm. Um, I think there, in when you think about investing, or we talked about earlier the stock market, there's mm-hmm. this natural thought to think, well, investors are just in it to make a buck. And right. um, investors like yourselves and at Colchuk Companies can really make a huge humanitarian difference, like you alluded to, by um, building companies that are making really um, big impact in all sorts of areas. Yeah. Um, tell us about some of the companies um, maybe around Washington State or our region that yeah. you've been really excited about. Yeah, so Coltrick invests, at this point we invest all over the world, mm-hmm. uh, but we do make investments locally. And some of the things we've done recently, uh, well, just from a time and knowledge standpoint, we we work with uh, Chocolat and Leavenworth and uh, with Sure to Rise Bakery in Kashmir. Um, we have made, uh, we helped uh, help Basket Bread get off the ground. They're just a big- Really article. cool company. Yeah, great company. Uh, Spencer and Riley yeah. are just building something really cool there. And it's been fun to work with them since the very beginning on that. And so we've helped them both financially and, and with advice. Um, on, a, on a for-profit side, we've invested in Beta Hatch, which is a previous Flywheel Conference winner. Uh, but we've invested more substantially later with another group. Uh, we've invested in a company called Lodge, which is not based here, but it has a couple of locations in Leavenworth, a couple of right. lodging locations. Right, yeah, I locations. think I've seen them come into town. Yeah, kind of an adventure um, travel type company, like hotel type things. Um, so that, that those are some local companies. Uh, Pet Hub is another one, another flywheel finalist. Uh, we made an investment uh, last year in Pet Hub, and we're excited about the growth we've seen there. Um you can you can kind of see how you light up talking about these companies. Yeah. I know that you're really passionate, and you said that too about sharing your knowledge. So when you write a check um, to support these companies, it's not just like here's a check and see you later. Mm-hmm. Uh, tell us a little bit how you're spending time with those entrepreneurs. Yeah, it, it's a uh, you know I've learned a few lessons along the way. You put that, back on the consulting yeah, hat. Yeah, put on the consulting <laughs> hat. Uh, and uh, you know, there's some things I've learned from yeah. my own mistakes and yeah. and other uh, things I've seen in other companies and. I try to try to um, provide wisdom when I can, and obviously there's some self-interest there. If it's a for-profit investment, mm-hmm. obviously if they do better, I do better. Right. But uh, but just generally, I like seeing people succeed. I know that it's hard to be an entrepreneur. It's hard to be a founder. Um, you can sometimes you, you need encouragement, and sometimes you don't see. You're just you're stuck in the weeds, and you need somebody who can kind of pull you out of the weeds. And say, look, you're doing great, but you need to focus over here, or this is distracting you, right? And what's cool about what I love about, um, you know, I know millennials and Gen Z get made fun of all the time by people my age, but I think it's just the opposite. Gen Z and millennials are great at asking for advice. And so I, mm. I was telling somebody the other day, I probably spend a vast majority of my time working with people who are at least 20 years younger than me because I really love the drive they have, the, the, you know, their willingness to take a risk, to want to create something new. And so I want to honor that and, and invest time in, with them as well as funds. Well, you invest time in entrepreneurs, but you're also investing time in helping other investors mm-hmm. um, get into this world. And this year, uh, you and your daughter are actually the fund managers right. for the Flywheel uh, Investment Conference. And um, for those who haven't seen, uh, 
Flywheel brings companies from across Washington State to compete for angel investment dollars. I don't want to go too much into the conference because we're short on time, but tell me a little bit about running that fund right. and now how you're sharing knowledge with new investors. Right. Well, so so I, I've run the gamut. I was somebody who just purchased a ticket the first year just yeah. to see what this thing was. And then the next year I became an investor. And, and each year it seems like we've gotten more involved. And then my daughter got involved. And my daughter works with me at Colchuck as well as um, Maura Cowboy, who works I think we have us. a photo of yeah. them to share so, on the screen. Yeah, they, they're kind yeah. of my, my two close colleagues. <laughs> yeah. This was last year's conference. But the more we got involved, the more we really uh, enjoyed just the whole process, but also we really enjoyed the network of investors and the friendships we were making. And so, uh, plus just the good we were doing in terms of helping companies uh, in this area and around the state. So uh, we were asked last year to, to become fund managers. So that means that Essentially, there's the conference that, that NCW Tech Alliance puts on, which is wonderfully run. Uh, but then there's the fund itself, which is essentially the investors pooling their funds to make the investment mm -hmm. prizes to the winning companies. Mm -hmm. And so somebody has to run that fund. And so uh, my daughter, Abby, and I are the managing members of that fund this year for the 2022 conference. And something, um, if people are watching today, um, and they're an accredited investor, which I'll tell them they can look online with that, mm -hmm. what the Securities and Exchange Commission definition is, but they've never invested. Maybe to say, what's unique about Flywheel? You know, what's the yeah. entry point yeah. and, and why that could be a good learning yeah, experience? What, what's what's really unique is that you have a, a wide variety of investors. Typically in these kinds of funds, you see fairly sophisticated investors that are really focused on the profit mode. Uh, we we have a variety. We have people in our fund who are accredited investors, but they've never done investing angel investing before. So they're in it because they want to learn. They, mm -hmm. This is something new. They just want to get the. We have others that have been doing it for a while, and uh, they're pretty sophisticated. And we have others that maybe haven't done a lot of angel investing, but they have a lot of sophisticated business experience. And so they're coming in and saying, "Okay, how do I start to apply and be able to apply this knowledge I've, I've built elsewhere in the startup space?" And so all those people come together and they work in teams and it's really fun to see the teaching that goes on. It's not just the fund managers that do the teaching. It is all the more sophisticated investors helping the, the ones that are newer to it. And it's been cool for me to see some of the people who were newer a few years ago are now becoming some of the teachers, right? <laughs> yeah. They're learning, yeah. right? So. Well, and um, for the audience today too, I'll, I'll just share transparently. So it's $6,000 to become an investor in the fund. Mm -hmm. And so we talked about earlier that diversification. When you think about, oh, I, I'd like to start investing in companies, but to invest in 25 to 30, like I don't have that kind of right. um, wealth to invest in. Flywheel provides a low entry point to say, you can invest in the Flywheel company every year right. for the next you know, 15, 20 exactly. years and build that exactly. for um, what is you know a relatively lower price point than any other probably model out there. Right. And last year, we we uh, split the prize into two yeah. two awards last year. So we had two great companies we invest in. And this year, we'll have two more companies. So we're yeah. increasing that. Instead of having yeah. one company a year, it'll be two companies <laughs> a year. And you're right. It does. If you do it every year. In 1999, still... NCW Tech Alliance has served as our regional hub for technology innovation. As a 501c3, their nonprofit mission is to connect people and technology resources to create a thriving community. You can network with the team and guests from today's show by visiting them at www.ncwtech.org.